I am absolutely thrilled to be here, honored to be here. I'm from New York, so I'm also happy to be away from the snow that I hear hit New York yesterday. Uh, so being in Florida is outstanding. Um, I also feel a little bit like Madonna with this headset and this, this stage setup. Um, so I've always wanted to be on stage. I always want to be a rock star. This is a little bit different, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about our work at IAVA, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. But for a minute, I want you to just stop as we sit here in Naples, Florida, and think about what's going on a world away. In Iraq right now, there's a young soldier on a checkpoint. In Afghanistan, there's a young female soldier out on patrol. And over the skies in Libya right now, young men and women are operating combat patrols and in actively involved in combat operations. The question we need to think about in the next couple years is what will we do when they come home? How will we support them? They need more than just yellow magnetic ribbons. They need real support from our country. And there are 2.3 million men and women who've served in Iraq and Afghanistan since 9-11. What I'm going to talk to you today is about what I think is the most compelling social and economic opportunity facing our country. And it's investing in those men and women. Now we've got a history of doing this in our country. And there's no finer example than the group that Tom Brokaw called the greatest generation. The men and women who served during World War II, experienced the Depression, came home and helped rebuild our economy, and went on to be a generation of leaders in philanthropy and education and business. Many of you are in this room tonight, have served in Iraq, sorry, pardon me, served in World War II, served in other generations of conflicts. And one thing that I want to do, I hope you don't mind me taking the liberty to do this, if you've served in our nation's military at any point in your life in any conflict, would you please stand and can we recognize your service and thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. It's men and women like you that have built our country. And when you came home, you had some support. You had a community that supported you, a community that understood where you're coming from. And that's one of the biggest gaps we face. There are 2.3 million or so men and women who serve, but they're less than one half of 1% of the overall population. In World War II, it was close to 12%. So we've never had so much asked of such a small number of people. And I'm gonna talk to you today about our work to support them and tell a few of their stories. Now, my story is a bit unconventional. I coached high school football, I used to work on Wall Street, and I was serving in the National Guard and, and, and Reserves when 9-11 hit. And when 9-11 ha happened, I was living in New York, and my National Guard unit was called to respond and serve in the rescue efforts at Ground Zero. After that, I went on to serve in Iraq as an infantry platoon leader, and when I came home, I saw a country that was disconnected. And I had 38 guys under my command who were struggling. Unemployment issues, family problems. We had a suicide in my unit. One of my squad leaders was in Walter Reed who had lost both his legs. Some of them were doing well, but it was clear there was a void. There wasn't a place that understood where they were coming from that could bridge that gap and that could provide them with support. So as an infantry officer, I did what we were trained to do, adapt, improvise, and overcome. And in 2004, me and a few other veterans started the first and largest nonprofit organization for Iraq and Afghanistan vets, IAVA. And today, I want to tell you a little bit about our work through a personal story uh, and, and one guy that I think is a really great representation of the opportunity that presents itself if we invest in these young men and women. So we call them the next greatest generation. We believe that they can be a generation of leaders. They've been through tremendous adversity. They've been serving for almost 10 years now. And I believe that when they come home, they, like the World War II generation and previous generation of veterans, can lead our country through the next few decades. So I'm going to tell you about one guy, Ray Leal. Ray Leal is a Marine. He, is a, he was a Lance Corporal. He was a boxer, incredibly dynamic guy, served the Marine Corps in Iraq. And his story, like a lot of stories, starts in Texas. That's where he grew up. That's where his family's from. He deployed with the Marine Corps out of Texas to a place called Fallujah. Wonderful this time of year. Tropical weather, very nice. But needless to say, he was there during one of the toughest times of combat. He was awarded a Bronze Star with V device for valor, which is not uh, something that happens very often for a Lance Corporal. Tremendous leader, dedicated service member. 
When he came home, he came home to his wife, Ashley. Beautiful family, came back to South Texas. He was proud of his service, he loves his country, but he was struggling. He was having a hard time finding people who understood where he was coming from. He was hours away from his local VA. He was dealing with mental health stress. He was dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, and he didn't know where to go. He didn't know who really understood where he was coming from, and he felt isolated. He started to have problems with his wife. And one day he was sitting on his couch, and he saw a public service announcement that our group put together that I'm going to show you now. The message is clear. If you're an Iraq and Afghanistan veteran, you're not alone. We know where you're coming from and we've got your back. We're veterans. We've been down that road. And we want to help you succeed in the next step of your life. So Ray's sitting on his couch in Texas. He sees that ad and it drives him to our website, communityofveterans.org. This is the 21st Century Veterans Hall. In the old days, the old model was a VFW hall, a Legion hall, where veterans would come together, share experiences, tell war stories, maybe drink a beer, and share resources and create a network. For the next generation, they want to do it online. And Community of Veterans is the place where they do it. They can talk to other veterans from Texas. They can talk to other veterans who are experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder. They can talk to other veterans who like the Cowboys. Any interest that they have, they can bind together and share their experiences and resources in a protective, closed environment. Only veterans can get inside. We've got almost 20,000 veterans who are using this resource every day, and it's producing tremendous results. So when Ray got inside, what did he get? He got other veterans, other people who understood his experiences, who could relate to his family situation, who knew what it was like to be in a classroom when somebody says, have you killed anybody? These people have been down that road and they had his back, whether it was three o'clock in the morning or it was three o'clock in the afternoon, he could go into this community and find a supportive network of other veterans just like him. And these are the types of conversations that are going on inside this community. Has anyone had a rough time in this economy being a veteran? A lot of them have. The unemployment rate right now for Iraq and Afghanistan veterans is about 12%. That needs to change. Our goal at IAVA is to lower the unemployment rate this year. We believe these folks are incredibly dynamic. They're talented. They're early technology adopters. They're disciplined. They're going to have a nice haircut and be on time, right? <laughs> but if you served as a squad leader in Fallujah, I firmly believe that you can do pretty well in a sales desk on Wall Street. These are the people you need in your companies, and that's the argument we're going to make in the next year. Other types of conversations. Are you having trouble sleeping at night? One in five folks are coming home with post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. It's a combat injury. We can help them, we can provide support, and we can set them up for success, especially in the critical time periods of the first couple months when they come home. We can turn the page on the way veterans were treated after Vietnam if we get involved, if we provide a supportive community and give them the resources they need. My wife just left, took the kids with her, and all I feel is numb. Where do you go? You can go here, and folks know where you're coming from. Nights especially can be difficult for some folks. 24 hours a day, if you're in Fallujah and you have an internet access, you can log into our community and get hooked up. And this is what Ray said. Until he learned of, of, of IAVA and COV, he realized he wasn't alone. They wouldn't judge him. He knew they understood. And that's a huge part of what we do. Our work is focused on healthcare, education, employment, but maybe most importantly, community. Building community, which is very difficult to do. This is what he gets. Ray comes to New York and led the Veterans Day Parade. Now he's gone from a guy who's struggling to a leader, a social entrepreneur himself, to use a military term, a force multiplier. He's activating other veterans. He's inspiring other veterans. And he's become a leader for us. 
He went all the way to Congress and testified about the issues he was having at his local VA, how he transitioned home, what our government can do to support him and other veterans coming home. So Ray's become a leader. And we're reaching out even further with this TSA. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. So that's our message to veterans, that we've got their back. We're going to be there for them as they've been there for our country, and that's going to be my message to you. You'll see our ads like this around the country. This is all donated media. We work with the Advertising Council, over $100 million in donated media. So folks are helping us reach out to veterans no matter where they are. You'll see billboards like this. And our message is clear. This is a group you can invest in. This is a group that our country should support. It doesn't matter how you feel about the war, who you voted for, what political party you come from, we should all unite behind the men and women who've served. And we need your help. Thank you. So there's Uncle Sam. We want you. We want you to help. We want you to support our newest generation of veterans and help us create America's next greatest generation. Thank you very much.